Sunil Shastri, a consultant, educator and speaker in ocean and environmental governance, and Morris Fidelli, project lead of the Thrive Project, spoke to our Thrive community about methods to protect our waterways and how their well-being impacts our planet. Their talks were part of August's SDG 14 and SDG 15 theme about life on land and water. After their presentations, Sunil and Morris kindly took questions from the audience. Good evening, everyone. So the first question is towards um, Dr. Sunil. So it is excellent presentation, sir. Due to increasing population and population density, the ocean pollution is also increasing. So what are the new strategies to overcome those problems? Right now, that's a that's a that's a. I mean, it sounds like a straightforward question. But and first of all, thank you for the compliments. Uh, sounds like a very straightforward question, uh, and should have a straightforward answer. But uh, it's not as simple as that. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you. So, for example, on the one hand, I mean, this is a fact that the population is going up, and the pollution is going up. Now, obviously, what what how how can we square the square the circle, as it were, as they call it, you know. Now, one of, the, one of the things that I have been thinking about, and this is called more for, for less, more from less for more. Okay, so trying to do, re, redesign our systems so that we can get more from less for more. So, so that, that one, if you see, see what I mean. So I think that, that is one, one way of looking at it. Now, the other thing to look at is, you know, the, the, the 10 solutions that I have given at the, at the end there. Now they, they clearly tell you, for example, if you, if you look at the let me let me recap myself what the 10 solutions were. And one of them talks of reduced food waste, for example, you know And yeah. it, it, it is true that most of us waste a lot of food in the sense that not just us, but from what they call it from farm to the pork, you know what, what, what is called as farm to pork. So there in the farms, the, the, the food is produced, good food is produced. But they think, oh, this is not going to sell in the market, or uh, this doesn't look quite good, or this doesn't look, you know, uh, or whatever, like doesn't look shiny enough or flashy enough or whatever. So they throw it, and the supermarkets don't accept it. So when the supermarket accepts it, then they they also choose, pick and choose what they want, and they throw some, some some of it. Then when we go to the supermarket and buy food, and spend our hard-earned money. <clears throat> Then we come home and put it in the fridge. And then after three or four or five days or a week or something, we pick up the food and we say, oh no, this has gone too old or whatever. I don't want to eat it anymore. I bought it, but I don't want it, you know, and throw it. Apparently, I mean, this is something that an average household in the UK wastes 50% of the food that they actually buy of their own money. So I'm not talking about the farm to pork, you know. So that's, that's one way of looking at it, but that's still rather simplistic. Um, I, I would I would still think that we have to find major ways in which our entire production systems can be made more efficient, you know, because we cannot tell people there, there, there's some school of thought that will say, oh, we must reduce consumption. Tell that to the poorest of the poor. Okay. You can you can tell reduce consumption to people who are already consuming a lot, like people like you and me. Okay. okay, but tell that to the poorest of the poor. I mean, that fellow is not eating his two meals a day proper, you know, proper two meals a day, probably managing in, on one meal a day. Now, you cannot tell that person to, you know, reduce your demands or reduce your wants or reduce your needs. No, for them, they, ha they are going to increase their needs. In fact, the world is in such a situation that the more of the population that is have nots than haves. So, so those poor people are going to continue to increase their demand or needs. I, I, I won't even call them wants, I would call them needs. So those people's needs are going to carry on increasing. So you cannot buy any, uh, what do you call, any uh, moral, there, there can be no moral way by which you can tell them, no, no, you must reduce your consumption. So we have to find better ways. So what we call as, uh, geoengineering changes in the in the way things happen so for example energy production uh, i have mentioned there uh, more more onshore uh, wind wind turbines rather than offshore wind turbines 
more renewables in general. But more importantly, I think, and this may come strange coming from an environmentalist like me, but it's very important that this we, we real, realize that in energy production, we have uh, what we call as the fossil past. We have our fossil past, as I call it, and we want to have the renewable future, uh, the golden bridge between the two. And like I said, this will come strange coming from me, is nuclear. So, and, and we have actually made a big mistake. M many parts of the world, including Germany particularly, has have made a big mistake by unilaterally decommissioning their nuclear power stations and it is time that we have to rethink nuclear because nuclear is and I'm, I'm, I'm check this for a fact nuclear is the safest form of energy safest form of energy you know bar none it's absolutely the safest form of energy despite chernobyl despite fukushima and all that okay so we have to focus on nuclear for now until we are in a position where solar is able to take care of it i mean if you see the if you see the uh, how how little how little land you need, they have shown that if you have uh, if you have a small patch of land, well, small in the sense you know, compared to the small patch of land in the Sahara Desert, that can provide the entire world with all the energy. Theoretically, yes, solar energy. But the point is, energy has got other problems in terms of where do you produce it and how do you distribute it to all the places that you want it to go to. So we have to have ways in which energy has to be produced in known ways that we know today and then move to the ones that that uh, that uh, that need to be developed as quickly as possible but most importantly i think uh, we have to reduce the waste of everything of waste morris was talking about wasting water you know he's talking about if i if i have two two liters more i'm depriving my neighbor of two liters you know we have to all reduce our water consumption we have to all reduce our food consumption we have to have reduce our, uh, you know, uh, you know, just this material, material, materialistic th things that we have. But and and focus has got to be on that shrinking of the that. Uh, I, I, I think one of the things that I, I must mention, or I should have mentioned, but I must mention is this book by Kate Roworth called Donut Economy, uh, and that talks about. How we have we have actually gone past our planetary boundary, particularly in those three aspects that I mentioned. Uh, you know, the climate change being one, but even bigger than that was the uh, uh, disruption of the nitrogen cycle and the loss of biological diversity. And all those things are haunting us back. And that is where we have our focus has got to be. So uh, I would not say that uh, it is a it is an easy solution or an easy problem. But I think uh, the solutions are there because our ingenuity always uh, is uh, is all all encompassing and all uh, all uh, you know all pervasive really. So it will it will work. But the point is that we have to we have to focus on the right things. I, I don't know. This is a rambling answer and not not quite. But I hope there are some good points in there uh, that respond to the question. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Next is towards Dr. Morris. So thank you, sir, for your excellent presentation. According to the seven C's scale linking, why did you take community as a different level? So country, community, sorry, country, city, then came the community. So why have you taken community as a different level? Uh, thanks for that. Uh, and I'll, I'll answer the question shortly, but I just wanted to emphasize what actually Sunil just mentioned. It's true that uh, nuclear is um, pretty much a way forward. It is safe these days, uh, commensurate to its uh, output that it can produce. And there are articles that have been written in Thrive Project, actually, uh, through the blogs where uh, we've examined this in, in much more details. Uh, and also uh, the other point that... Um, um, Sunil had made about uh, Kate, Kate Rayworth. I've met her with her in person. And the donut economics, um, or the theory behind donut, donut economics, has been uh, uh, assessed and incorporated into the Thrive Framework as well. So it's actually part and parcel of uh, one of the foundational focus factors. Um, her work is, is being recognised uh, there as well. Um, so anyhow, just to answer your question. so. Um, someone had said to me, um, the levels are arbitrary. You can make up, 
you know, nine levels or 13 levels, etc. And to some extent that is true. You could actually make up your own sort of uh, structure for that. But it wouldn't change the idea behind um, what you've uh, uh, alluded to there is one specific example, the community level. So a community level basically uh, sits in between, say, an enterprise and uh, a city or a state, that sort of type of thing. So think of a, a region, like a bioregion. So bioregions are characterized by uh, watersheds, um, you know, um, particular type of soil, uh, um, you know, the formation of, of, the, of the country or the area in particular. So bioregions are seen as a significant um, level at which to measure. Uh, it'll, it is more encompassing than that, though, because a community could be thought of as a village, for example, or it could be thought of as a part of a, of a state. So in different parts of the world, um, they have different ideas of how they break up their, <coughs> their country. You may have like a province, you may have a state, you might have a region, you might have a territory, etc. So there's different designations being used, but they all fall into that um um, I, I guess general sort of uh, level uh, in the diagram. So uh, that's how the diagram is structured. The main point to realize is that each level sits within the other. Just as we would say um, economy sits within uh, society, society sits in the environment, in a similar sort of way we would do the same thing here. Thanks Maurice. So the next question is towards Dr. Sunil. So, as I think the answer which you have said, are we adequately implementing the three R concept, like re reduce, reuse, recycle, to prevent the problems? And along with that, however, the most of the countries don't implement those strategies which you have mentioned at in, during the, your presentation. I want to know whether why the policymakers cannot implement good strategies like energy production using degradable waste is there any major scale projects happening in this area yeah so so first the first question is about uh, the three r's you know now yep. uh, actually the the, the 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 simple answer is no we're not doing enough but i have come across now i mean this is some, something that we have to think at individual level and our own level so we have to think in terms of what we can do uh, each, each one of us, because I always say each one of us has got to be an agent of change. And I have uh, recently come across not one, two or three or five or seven hours, but 12 hours now. Okay. So I, let me just very quickly go through those. I just found them. So I'll, I'll just talk to you about it very quickly. And it starts with the mindset. So the mindset is about the triggers. You know, the triggers are remember. So remember why you're doing something when you buy something or when you throw something. You know, so remember why you got it in the first place or remember why, why have you paid for it? Why have you spent your good, good earned money to get it? So remember, respect, respect the person who's done it, you know, respect the farmer, respect the uh, person who, who's made your clothing, respect the person who's made your shoes or whatever, you know, respect, refuse. So refuse in the sense of not taking stuff that you don't want. For example, uh, don't take a plastic bag when somebody offers you a plastic bag in a shop. I, I don't, for example, I carry my own reusable uh, cloth bag and I take it to a shop and if somebody offers me a plastic bag, I say, no, put it, put it in my bag, you know. So refuse mm -hmm. and reduce, you know, so that, that's one, one set of four. Then it continues with actions. So the actions are reuse. So reuse in the sense that reuse as much as you possibly can return uh, return as in give it back to the shop for example if there's excessive plastic packing i have tried this once or twice you, you become uh, you you become unpopular but i have tried this in supermarkets sometimes when for example simple things like a toothbrush or a or a shave, shave shaving blade or something has excessive plastic packing and what i do is i just open it there there and then and give it back to them and say i only want the razor razor blade i don't want the packing uh, so they very reluctantly say okay oh check it there or something like that you know so anyway so if everybody does that and i think people walking with their feet is very important then refill I, I, I remember, you know, when, I mean, not too long ago, uh, we all used to get milk bottles um, and the milk bottles you used to put them on your, your doorstep and the, the milk float would come and pick the empty ones next day and uh, give you the filled ones. 
and that was that was working pretty fine but now it, it's all plastic milk bottles or whatever you know so that's that's the other thing and the the, the fourth one in that and that is rot that is creating compost creating your own compost so that's the fourth the second set of four and then it's rounded off by the last resort which is which are the which are restore uh, so try to do something with it repurpose them repair and and recycle so so there are 12 hours here and then so the ideas there's no shortage of ideas uh, for individuals and even for uh, little families or little organizations and stuff like that but how much do we do and how much do we blame the policy maker or the government is is the thing you know so that's that's one thing uh, the second question was regarding uh, energy production yes everybody everybody knows that uh, uh, which is the best way of producing energy we want to produce renewables uh, we we want to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels um, but uh, what what happens is that the the people with the technology for example uh, you know even to to burn to burn coal more efficiently or to burn gas more efficiently or to make make your thermal power stations more efficient or whatever you know those things have got to be passed on from from the haves to the have nots you know technology transfer is very important and that does not happen for the simple reason that the people who have developed the technology uh, they keep saying that oh we have spent enormous amounts of money uh, in developing the technology uh, and and bring ourselves to this level why should we give it for nothing to somebody else but but that that does not work because the thing is you have yes 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 indeed you have spent a lot of uh, time and effort and money and resources to 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 create the new technology but then you have reaped the benefits of it you know so it, it's time you passed on these these expertise that you have uh, to the to the people who who do not have that expertise and only then uh, we can we can uh, develop better ways of uh, uh, energy energy production and energy distribution so energy generation distribution uh, is extremely uh, extremely crucial uh, in reduction of uh, reduction of pollution reduction of uh, waste uh again like i said these are these are not easy questions but i think uh we 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 have to i think at at some point in time we have to stop blaming the governments and because governments are us you know we we are the governments are as good or as bad as as we are so so because we are not good enough the governments are not good enough and we have to really do something very drastic to uh, to uh, to change our our governments our our situation uh, or, uh, or change if if we if we make the changes ourselves then that will make enough uh, people to sit up and take notice and do do more stuff themselves i think that that would that is always my view you know there, there's uh, as as margaret mead very famously said you know there's uh, there's uh, it's only a small group of people uh, that change the world indeed it's only the small group of world that can uh, group of people that can change the world you know uh, people i think there, 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 there's another quote that comes to my mind it says uh, people uh, with uh, with passion and purpose should uh, should influence the people with power and position you know and that's that is where our role comes in role like people like you and me and morris and everybody that we are the people if we have if we have enough passion and purpose we should be able to influence those in power and position thanks so so there is another question towards dr morris now education is the pillar to counter defining issues of climate change is the international organizations actually doing enough to shift the viewpoint of youth through education do we need any new tools and tricks to involve in education and encourage youth like games animation etc thanks for that uh, ganesh um just conscious of time i'll try and give a brief answer Firstly, just building on the point that uh, Sunil just said that um, indeed we do need collaboration, not competition. Typical mindset in business, industry, governments, wherever you go, is to compete with one another, to be the first and, and, and keep it as a treasured advantage or some sort of competitive advantage. Uh, there's no time for that. In this world, we need to collaborate uh holistically worldwide and 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 get ourselves out of the situation we're in and move into a pros uh, a situation of prosperity 
Anyhow, coming back to your question, uh, Ganesh. Um, so, uh, yeah, using uh, I mean, what can be used to f to get uh, um, yeah, the youth more involved with with indeed uh, the area that we work in. Um, so yes, through games could be could be a way through educational tools, and educational tools have been gamified typically for quite some time to try and um, uh, get more uh, people involved with it. But I think um, I think yeah, it, it comes back to the, that education piece, just making sure that we are educating young and old uh, about the wherefores of, of what's going on. Uh, often people uh, are shocked to find out certain things that they actually don't know that these things, these sort of things are going on. Uh, not totally kept as a secret, but just that they're not advised about the implications. Um, and it's not till we're touched more directly do we realise it seems to be at an arm's length and people seem to think that, um, you know, it's, um, you know, what could little me do, that type of thing. Whereas it's it is, you can make a difference. We can all make a difference. We are making a difference. For the ones that are championing uh, thrivability, for example, we are actually making a difference in a day-to-day -day, uh, life. By making those small changes, as Sunil was pointing out, each one of us will help us get us across the line. Uh, to wait for some organization, some government body to, 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 cut, to step in, uh, firstly, it's not very likely to happen, certainly not likely to happen in a timely manner, and they just don't have the resources as a one giant organization to just make it all happen. Uh, I'll leave you with, because uh, I know we're up for time, I'll leave you with an analogy which explains this a little better. Um, it's like being in your favorite uh, team sport on the field, let's say, I don't know, soccer or whatever you can relate to, and you're on the starting line. Um, and you know that, um, you know, we have to get to the end. We have to, you know, kick a goal somewhere along the line. We know there's this boundary on the left. If we go too far left, we're going to fall off. We know there's this boundary on the right. If we go too far to the right, we're going to be out of contention. We're not going to get to the destination. So we're on the starting line. We can, we know the goal is somewhere down there, but we don't quite see it. It's a foggy day. It's a bit fuzzy, but it's down there somewhere. And we're sitting on the starting line and we have a bunch of, folks who are saying we don't know all the answers we can't see the goalpost we're not going to start until we have all the answers you know um and yeah they don't get started or they think you know should we kick the ball this way you know mm -hmm. of course not we know not to go too far this way not to go too far that way we know not to go that way so we need to start kicking the ball and running we know it's this way. Let's kick the ball this way and start running. We'll catch up with the ball and eventually we will see the goalposts and we will see where we have to land. So this is what we got to do. We cannot sit around, wait for having a 100% solution to every single problem in this world. You know, we do have a lot of solutions and we do have a lot of problems, but we, you know, we know most of it, but not all of it. But it's not a good reason to procrastinate and sit on the starting line because the timer is counting down. You know, we've only got so many years to go or seconds, if you're thinking of, of the sports game, to go. Either we get to the finish line and score and land and, and be safe. Otherwise, there's no point to start moving once we go past zero. OK, we need to get moving now, urgently. It's an imperative. It's an important and urgent task that we need to make. We know we need to travel this way. We'll catch up with the ball. We'll figure out where we're at. We'll maybe eventually start to get a better idea of where the finish line is. And we'll keep going. We need to keep going and keep going until we actually are successful at this. Definitely don't sit there and do nothing and definitely don't kick the ball this way. That part we know already doesn't work. So I'll leave you with that because I know we're up for time. Uh, thank you all for um, allowing me to share some insights on the Thrive Framework and thank you Sunil for, for joining us. You've been a, a very uh, um, you know, trusted colleague of ours, very supportive of uh, what the organisation does and certainly instrumental with the ocean governance movement as we move forward. So thank you for that.